Hello. Am I online? Should be. I don't know how much there's delay and everything, so I need your help, people. Never done this before, so you need to tell me if everything is working as it should. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello, hello, hello. Not sure. Can you hear me? How is the microphone? Can you hear me like, is it too quiet or what? Okay, great. So we're on. Ooh, my heart is beating. Very nerve wracking this situation. Anyways, I thought I would first tell you a story from years and years ago. Keeping in mind that the topic today in this live stream is we're looking at a situation where, you know, first the guitar felt good and then it didn't anymore. Like, you know, one day you're playing and you're feeling great with the guitar and the next morning you pick it up and it feels like something has changed. And and to a lot of players, this is a kind of a frustrating situation, of course. If you're not really a tech-savvy player who knows his or her way around, you know, the um, how to adjust things and whatnot. So this is what we're looking at. First it was good, then it wasn't. So we're, we're, we're observing this situation and what might have happened. And this is where my story comes in from, from years ago. Um, it's a piece of wisdom that was passed on to me. So it's not my wisdom. There's a lot of players uh, doing this, but not, not everybody comes to think of it from this perspective. So let me tell you this story. It's, it involves this little artifact. Can you, can you see what it is? People in Finland recognize what it is, I think. If you can see it, I don't know how good the video quality is there. Anyways, it's... Um, can you still hear me? I haven't seen <laughs> any chat messages in a while. I need confirmation that this is going okay. Anyways, I'll continue and, and keep looking at the chat, I hope. Um, yeah, so, great, good, thank you. <sighs> thank you very much. So, this, this little item here, this little item here is um, a Finnish mark from the time before Finland joined European Union and, and started using euro currency. And my friend, a great guitar player, a Finnish legendary guitar player, Juha Björninen, told me this story. I'm, I've heard later that, like it always is, I mean, you, Juha has probably learned it from somebody else and so on and so You know, we're, all of us were standing on, on, on the shoulders of those who were before us and it's our job to pass the wisdom on so anyways this thing um you visited my shop and you know and, and and he he brought his guitar for setup and i can't remember what guitar it doesn't really matter he brought a guitar in and um he sat down with it to show me what's what's the what's the deal, what he wants me to do with it. But with, before he did anything else, you know, he sat down and he dug out a Finnish mark from his pocket and did something on the fretboard with it. 
I didn't have quite time to see what it was, but he did something and then started playing and showing me the things. And I had noticed that what he was doing there with, and I, ha I couldn't help myself. I asked him that, what, what is that? What are you doing? And then he, he, he told me that um, always when he sits down, when he, when he starts playing guitar, when he picks up a guitar in his hand, he always, he has always this item in his pocket and he always checks the string height with it. So this is, he checks the string height. He has a certain place. I mean, again, you could do it anywhere you want, but what he did, did was that he put this item under the string, under the high E string at the 12th fret, like this. So he had a guitar, I have here a guitar, so. He put it there between the fret and the, and the high E string like that. That's all he did. And then he put the coin back to his pocket. So what was he doing? More than, well, he was doing actually two things. So he was checking the, the action of the guitar. But even more than that, he was calibrating his brain. <laughs> it means that, you know, then he, he, he was explain, explained to me more that, because often the situation is that when you pick up a guitar and, you know, and you feel like, oh, this doesn't feel right, there's something wrong. And then you try the action, and then you notice that, oh, but it's the same as yesterday. Exactly the same as yesterday. So I just must have a bad day. It's not always the guitar. You know, it's very often different days, the guitars just feel different. And it's a very, very useful um, tool to have. Not necessarily a finish mark, but some kind of an item that for you is easy to keep in your pocket and you can l l like make it a routine for yourself that whenever you pick up a guitar, you check it first. And the, that's the trick. You check first before you even start taking the first chord and maybe start feeling bad about something. You try it first and then you realize that it's the same as yesterday. And when you start then playing, your mind gets a different perspective to the situation from the get-go, from the start. So you might might save some frustration from yourself. Because this is the situation, really. I mean, if, if a day, if, if a guitar one day is good and the next day isn't, and you haven't done anything in between, you haven't changed the strings, you haven't touched the setup, you haven't done anything, it's 99.9% .9 certainty that it is the truss rod. The action has changed. Because that's the, you know, guitars, let alone some um, rare exceptions, but most of the times they're made of wood, and, and wood is a living material that reacts to the relative humidity of the air, to the temperature, and so on. And often, you know, if the night was a bit colder and maybe there is no heating in the house, in the room where you keep the... whatever things like this, um, the position of the neck has moved. And, and, and the fingers of human being, they are so precise instruments that they notice the tiniest um, the tiniest change, you know. I often um, use the analogy of the fret sizes to explain this because people are so kind of you know that you know small frets they feel so tiny. If you're if you're used to having jumbo frets in your guitar, so small frets feel like oh I can't play because these are so small, you know. 
and the jumbo frets feel like to some other one they feel like huge and the matter of the fact is that the difference between the vintage small frets that Fender used and uses in their reissue vintage style guitars the difference in the fret height between the smallest electric guitar fret wire and the biggest jumbo fret wire is 0 0.5 millimeters and those are the extremes and for human hand this feels like the world of difference like no i can't play because it's so different it's 0 0.5 and with the with the truss rod position and the neck moving it's kind of even smaller um changes that the player depending of course on the personality one type of a guy could be perfectly happy with the action being quite different from yesterday or the week before or the month before. You just kind of get go with the flow and you just get used to it and don't don't mind. But if you're like me, I'm very easily like you know I'm not I'm not a great guitarist. I'm not a great I'm not a guitar player. I I I, I play guitar. I love it and I you know I, I can do stuff in my limited way the way i do but i'm i'd like to think that i'm quite knowledgeable about the instrument itself after all these years <laughs> making them and so and this has kind of caused me to kind of go nuts also with this kind of things that you know when i pick up a guitar and it's like oh ding 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 and it's no it's not right so i'm what i'm doing is that i follow the the um wisdom of my mentor, Juha Björnen, here, and keep a finished mark in my pocket. And it's a bit problematic because finished marks haven't been available anymore since the 90s. It was that Finnish Finland. Now I can see here that oh, there's some error message that the streaming is not working well. Well, let's hope it's going to be okay. So. Where was I? I can't remember anymore. Ah, okay. Anyways, moving on. Um, you can notify me, and I, I can, I can, I can tell if it was something crucial. Oh uh, yeah, now I remember actually. So <laughs> I was t saying that that I was already in the '90s using the mark, and so when Finland changed to euro my biggest stress about the currency exchange was that oh my god i have to get all the finished marks i can and save them you know and keep them for the future use because for me the finished mark has a better sound when i'm doing the setup of the guitar not just i think it's pretty much the same thickness as the 20 cent coin euro coin but it doesn't somehow feel the same i'm so I'm a bit crazy like that. But you know, it could be anything. It could be like a thick plectrum, or it could be anything that, you know, when you feel that, okay, hey, this guitar is great now. Now it's really great. It's great. Everything is perfectly, you know. And at that point, what you should do is to find some kind of a, an item that is handy to keep in your pocket at all times so that you also can start calibrating your brain when you pick up your guitar and don't get pissed off you know if it was guitar's fault you know we're human beings <laughs> okay that's that story so yeah okay i already said mentioned that the point of this the really the crucial point i repeat it because that's the you know remember our perspective today is that um you know yesterday it was good now it isn't and what can i do about it so that from that perspective this is really a life-saving little thing to have for any guitarist yeah so guys I have here some notes because I was kind of afraid that there won't be anybody there. But there seems to be. 
So shoot questions. I would love to hear questions. Write them there to the chat, and I, I'm, you know, um, yeah, I will. I will. I'm all the time looking at it and trying to keep an eye, keep an eye out. And and if I don't, Emma will kick my butt, like she did two minutes ago. That's why I remember to ask, tell you to ask questions. <laughs> so, so keep them coming. And unless I see a question there, I'll just. I'll just move on talking about something for a little while longer, if that's okay for you. Um, but anyways, I mean, this is the, yeah, okay. Mibu is asking, what about the humidity in the air affecting the vibration of the body? Well, there we go to those fine, fine nuances that, yes, everything matters. Everything has a slight effect to how things sound, to how how things feel, you know, everything matters, and and then the most sensitive of us will notice more of those nuances, more of those changes, while the while the while the other guys just keep pedaling on and they have no idea that something has changed. So I mean, this is this is really, um, but it's also like it's it's uh, fact. Some of the factors are just beyond. Let's say, you know, be, beyond reasonable effort to how to kind of effect, like manipulate effect to it. So there are certain wood materials, finishes, so on, so on. That okay? Now I'm getting more questions. That's great. Yeah, certain materials that um, that act differently. Like for example, the you know okay I'm I can't avoid it I have to talk about because my best experience best knowledge about wood and everything it's about my guitars and the the type of wood we use and these are the kind of you know this is the exact reason the, the one the question that Mibu mentioned there that how does humidity change effect to the body the tone and and obviously the neck so we're using as much as we can or certain wood species that can be thermally aged we're always using thermally aged we've been using thermally aged tone wood since since the end of 1990s since the turn of the millennium and and so on but now let's move on okay do you think there's a time period for a new finished guitar to set in naturally and maybe set into the environment where it's kept but but it before it becomes more stable absolutely yes you know um new guitars now we're talking about like all the new guitars the the faster the guitars are made in factories the guitars are made very fast i talked once to a to with an ibanez um uh factory one of the one of the guys at the top, who was um, who was exhibiting, um, visiting or exhibiting, I don't know, at the Frankfurt Music Mess, and we had a had a chat about the different ways we make guitars. Because you know, out of out of factory made guitars, Ibanez is one of my favorite brands because they've kept kind of like the, to me, it's amazing how how little amount of problems in their guitars, like caused by twisting necks and whatever. Not, um, you know, they are kind of way above average when talking about factory guitars to me so i was interested in learning about them and i i one of the things that kind of caught my eye was that my ear was that the the kind of turn time in the in in a factory the guitar when the when the guitar is started the make the build process starts it's only um it's only a few hours later that it kind of pops out from the other end so the guitars are made when it's really the massive mass production, it's it, it, guitars are made very fast, and there you need to really know what you're doing because, you know, the the way we are making guitars, we're making guitars really slowly, exactly to avoid the situations that you know as as little tensions, as little problems would enter the guitar uh, when when it's ready. And still, a new guitar always takes time to set. 
And if there is some movement in the neck, back and forth, whatever, um, you know, from winter to summer to winter to summer, along the first years, this typically fades away and the guitar moves less and less. And this is also one of the things that why why vintage guitars are appreciated because they are when when the when the wood has aged for 50 years 60 years it hardly moves anymore it doesn't react to the to the midi so much okay let's see more um yeah stay yeah yeah always is saying here stable meaning also less of those something is off days exactly yes that's correct Okay, here it says you build a you built Alex Alex Valentini. Hey Alex, um, you built a custom guitar two years ago for me. It's the best guitar I have. How do you achieve this perfection? And what motivation motivates you to continue building guitars the old school way? Thank you, Alex. Very happy to hear this. Well, yeah, you know. Um, what could I say to that? What motivates me? This motivates me. What you just said. I mean that we are getting we are getting great feedback, and 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 for me, the old school way is the kind of ultimate way how we can how we can do things well, and how we kind of keep the motivation in doing things well because it doesn't become boring like factory work. I mean, to me personally, nothing wrong with factory work absolutely nothing wrong with anything like that um, we need all that we need all kinds of guitars in all price ranges and and all is good but for me personally just you know working in a factory would be boring and to me working in a guitar factory or sausage factory doesn't differ from each other very much so i choose not to work in a factory okay um let's see thank you alex Okay, Boston 81. What would you suggest to a young guitar maker to find money for machines? Repairs for locals won't do. You know, okay, this is a little bit off topic, but I will I will very briefly say that that do anything it takes if you must make guitars. My first my first advice is for anybody who considers making guitars as a profession is that first Look in the mirror and ask the question, is it something I must do? I must do that to live and to survive and to thrive. If it is, you'll find a way. Go work to McDonald's, do anything. Like, you know, take any job so you can kind of get by and, and save, save the money and do it. And if you don't have that burn, forget about it. It's not worth it. This is a tough business, believe me. <laughs> but it's a great hobby as well. So you know, there's there's different ways. But making it professionally, it's it's not the easiest one. Let's talk about that. Let's let's whine about that at another dedicated um, live stream. Okay. Ashok Parek. Thank you. I'm doing very well. Nice to see you too, Asok. Ah, oh, glad glad to hear that you're you're uh, you're following the Holy Couch. That's great. I've been really. It's for me the the show thing has been quite a kind of bizarre thing because it's so different, so much stepping outside the box of the comfort zone. You know. Yeah. Okay, Emma is telling me to take the mic down a little bit. No problem. Tell me if it's tell me if it's better. Yeah, okay, so let's talk about a little bit. I'll just, you know, throw out some kind of food for thought for you guys. So so let's say that um, you've checked your guitar, you've you've gotten used to the new routine with the coin or whatever artifact, and you you know, and you uh, played the guitar yesterday, and um, 
you play the guitar yesterday and it's great. And today you picked it up. It was not so great. And then you check with your coin and you notice that, oh, they're higher than what they were yesterday. So obviously something has changed. And now for more experienced players, the thing is that they, they know where to go, what to adjust first, right? But I'm, I'm seeing it a lot, especially younger and not so experienced, and it's totally understandable. How could you know, you know, that wh wh what should you do when the action is higher? So I'm seeing it a lot because we've been repairing guitars for, for so long time as well that, that this very often when, when the action gets higher by itself in a guitar, um, you know, you're uh, starting to kind of adjust from the wrong end. So you don't realize where, where you should adjust. So this is just a piece of advice that first the truss rod. And if you don't know how to adjust the truss rod, learn to do it. That's a good thing for every guitarist to, to learn. There's for some reason a lot of myths about it somehow that you can easily break your guitar or whatnot but but it's not really true it's, it's really difficult to break your guitar by adjusting the truss rod if you're careful and if you don't don't go head over heels just because you can't you can't turn that screw huge amount and you don't need to turn it a huge amount it's really a subtle thing that you do there and and wh when you kind of get it how to do it um it's gonna make your life easier because that's just you know you know okay guitar is different i need to adjust the truss rod don't adjust the bridge bridge saddles lower or you know because that hasn't changed overnight they haven't changed if you haven't touched them but the truss rod can change or the neck position okay i got a very good uh, comment from mibu here the strings where where is also playing a role in in perceiving the the sound of the guitar very true. This is also in my notes. Do you want to see my notes? They are very high tech. There's my notes. Yeah, it says here also, have you changed the strings? When did you change the strings? So this is also something that 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 the the strings, if you're playing with old strings, it, it affects the sound like crazy. And not only sound, but when they are old enough, you can't get them in tune anymore. You know, when if you look at worn down strings from under the strings where you press them to the frets, you will notice that there is like a little um, dent under the strings under every fret because the strings are wearing down. And when there starts to be those dents, the guitar doesn't play in tune anymore. You can't do the intonation for such a guitar, right? So if if your guitar feels like, oh, the chords are not in tune on the fretboard, yesterday they were, or last week they were, but now they aren't, then you know that's a good, very good point, Mibu. That then you go um, and change strings. Don't start adjusting the intonation. It hasn't changed if you didn't touch it. You know with the same strings and now we go to the another detail about strings when you're changing to to a fresh set of strings if you're using the same brand of strings same gouge of strings um with some uh well okay with a lot of exceptions there but certain string brands are more stable in quality regarding intonation than others. And quite surprisingly, I mean, often like small handmade strings, yes, they often, smaller brand strings, handmade strings really can sound awesomely great, but often those strings are not as uh, even quality regarding the intonation as some of the bigger factory strings. For example, the Elixir strings that we're using in our guitars. Or very normal, like usual, like Daddario strings or GHS strings or Ernie Ball strings. 
they tend to be quite even. You know, when you set change to a new set of strings, you don't usually need to touch the intonation of the guitar very much. Uh, yeah. What else? What else? What else? Mibu is selling. Are you a fan of perfectly straight neck or having some small relief? Mibu, you have awesome questions. Thank you. I love you, my friend. Um, let's say, let's put it this way. In almost all cases, regardless if you're playing with low action or a bit higher action, the guitar will sound cleaner, the frets will sound cleaner with less fret bus or no fret bus with a slight relief than straight, like dead straight neck. And it's because of the string physics about how the string vibrates and what is the kind of wave that it makes over the fretboard. So, so slight relief helps. And for those of you who who don't know what re neck relief means, oh my God, there should be. I, I this has been on my to do list for so long, long time with Emma that you know that um, we would do a video series of how to how to adjust these and what do these things mean and how do you do these. But I can't cover all this right now. So. But you will find you will find neck relief what it means. I'm sure. Let's go to that at some other point. Um, and and continuing to to Mibu's question, um, guitars differ. Each guitar can be a little bit different. In one guitar, um, certain amount of relief can work better than in another guitar. It is because the when the truss rod of the neck. Uh, kind of tightens or you tighten it or loosen it the arch that forms the kind of the shape of that relief can differ from guitar to another so but now we're going again to the to the fine nuances and to when you when you kind of go down that rabbit hole there's no bottom to it. I mean, it just continues. You just go finer, finer nuances until you kind of, you know, has happened to me a few times. Um, let's see what is here. Uh, okay, Shaggy's faction. How often do you get to use some uncommon specs like? Kalers, Evertune, Sustainers, Baritones, do you have experience with those? And Steinberger, Gearless Tuners are making one guitar with these. Well, yeah, from time to time we, we put some of these devices. We we've, we've, we built guitars with Evertune bridges. We built guitars with Sustainers, uh, Sustainiacs. Um, we made Baritones. Kalers, not so often, maybe one or two over the time, over the years, back in the, back in the day. Um, yeah, it has never kind of become our thing, but yeah. Okay, and Alex is asking here, do you plan to build a headless guitar in the future? <sighs> One of my dear friends who is also following this chat, Junnu, are you still there? Junnu Vuorala has also been asking me the same question. Well, one day maybe, one day maybe, you know. I hope it's something that I've. It's been on my mind like on and off. Ah, you know it's there. Okay, cool. <laughs> are you happy now that somebody else wants it too from us? I'm sure you are. Yeah, yeah. There, there's been a few questions for this, and and keep asking. Maybe one day it will come true. The more you ask, the more pressure you put on my, on my back. Yeah. Um, okay. How fast could you make a complete guitar if you only worked on that one? One week, one month. Well, this is, guys, this is going a little bit off topic. So let's, I, I can answer to this. No problem. But in the meanwhile, uh, Tuomas Timoren. Hey, Tuomas. 
Our video is about adjusting trust rod. Yes, you have no idea. It is on our to-do list on that wall there to do a whole series of those videos. It's coming, it's coming. But the problem is that I put the threshold so high that when I start doing it, we have to do it so that people really get it. I've seen so many videos where it's kind of shown, kind of shown, but not really shown that, you know, it's a lot of work. So anyway, fast, I will answer because in, in fact, Shaggy's Factions question, how fast you could make a complete guitar, it, it kind of relates to the topic here. Because, you know, the, the way I feel it, some factories have found pretty effective ways of making decent, stable quality guitars fast. But, um, yeah, I mean, with, with the tools, with the, everything that we have, if, if I concentrate or one of my luthiers concentrates on making one guitar, it doesn't take a whole lot of time. We could probably make it in, in, in a less than a week ready like really pushed all the all the hours together sure but it wouldn't be the same guitar and it wouldn't be a great guitar <laughs> for a number of reasons and and one of the most crucial reasons is that um guitar made that way i mean every time you let's say i take a, a neck blank a piece of maple and I saw it to shape in other in other words I remove wood from that piece of wood that has been in that shape for maybe years well that piece of wood is going to react to it it's a live material in that way it's going to react to it and if I rush on I saw it to shape I push it through the planer through the sanding machine you know, route it to shape, route the neck, truss rod channel, uh, glue the fretboard on, uh, shape the neck, do everything, dun, 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 like, like with a, that kind of a schedule. There's going to be tensions in that guitar in the end. It's not going to be as relaxed as the guitar that has been made in a more timely manner. So even though we could make a guitar, I could make a guitar fast, but I don't want to. I, in my opinion, making a good guitar takes months. It just takes months. Um, don't forget to like the video. Follow fellow followers. Yes, like the video. Thank you for reminding me. I'm so I'm so new. I'm not a YouTuber. Look at my technology I'm using here. Sure, SM57. It's my. Uh, microphone that I use for micing my my guitar cabinet, but I didn't have a mic here. Auntie, you are you there? I don't know if you're there, but if you're there, you need to come help me with my my new YouTuber career, <laughs> setting up my studio here. Um, yeah. So anyway, like the video, yeah, and subscribe to our channel, share it to your friends, do all that thing that YouTubers say in their videos that you should do. Do that to me too, to my videos. Yeah. <clears throat> Let me see. There's come so much questions here. Um, <clears throat> what is your experience? Oles asks. What is your preference on how much can player experiment with different string gouges without refiling the nut? You can't do very much. Very good question. You can't do very much without refiling the nut. That's. I mean, you can experiment to kind of. To get the you know to to uh, get the feel of the sound, but in order to make the guitar stay in tune and everything, it's really like if you have ten forty six strings in your guitar and you change to you know heavy bottom fifty two to ten or you know eleven to fifty or eleven to forty nine or whatever, it doesn't work. The nut slots most likely will kind of, the, the strings will hang at the at the nut slots and and it, the guitar won't stay in tune anymore as well but depends of course if the nut slots were very loose to begin with maybe it works but typically it wouldn't work and the other way if you go to go to lighter gouge um you get different kind of problems so the the string might all of a sudden if the let's say if it's a really perfectly made nut for 1046 strings and you put 
nine 42 strings to that guitar, the strings might all of a sudden sit tiny, tiny bit too low in the nut slots, and there's going to be fret buzz on the open strings. Or you're going to get annoying buzzing at the nut because the 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 string is loose there and sounds like a sitar. So you can't do very much, but you can experiment. Like I was experimenting the other day, um, putting really much heavier gauge guitars, uh, strings to one of my guitars, just to see how it sounds, without kind of minding that I know from the get-go it won't stay in tune. I just want to hear how it sounds so I can evaluate or observe if I would want to go to that string gauge in, in with that guitar. You know, and um, yeah, and th so if I would decide yes, then I would refile the nut. Or if I would not be a guitar maker, I would take it to a professional to have it filed for me. Yeah. Uh, what else? What else? What else is here? Hey, David, you're late. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I was almost late too. Glad I could make it in time. Um, bucket of noises asked, what is my opinion on shielding cavities, electronics, electronics, cables, etc. Et this kind of relates to another question earlier asked by Mibu. Everything affects. Everything affects. But I will just, again, we're off topic. But um, since this is the this is the the beta, this is the first, you know, ever YouTube stream. Maybe we can allow a little bit of going back and forth, and soon we have to stop anyways. So um, I'll just say that, um, you know, back in the 50s, in the 60s, the guitar electronics were not shielded, and it works pretty well without shielding if there's no issues with the pickups, especially, you know, if you have humbuckers, if you have, um, if the wiring is fine, you kind of don't need the fancy uh, shielding in the guitar in order for it to work fine. It's something that has kind of happened later, and you do get some um, some advantage with with the shielding, like with the fluorescent lights or uh, all kinds of electronic devices and things. Kind of signals, you know, coming from outside to your guitar or or um, fre frequencies, radio frequencies, whatever. So you might get some advantage in some difficult situations with, with the shielding, but this is why I wanted to mention the shielding, because, because shielding can also make the guitar worse than it was without the shielding. If the shielding is not done right, it really can make the guitar a lot worse. Because if, if, it, isn't a perf if it isn't like a um, correctly made Faraday cage shielding, that connects, you know, the, the, the shielding connects to the single ground from one spot only. Then we, we may end up, you know, as the shielding acting sort of like as a capacitor, which might, you know, increase the problems that you have with the, with the guitar. Or if the, if the shielding is done with, uh, aluminum foil that you can't um, you can't solder the pieces together, or if you don't solder the copper pieces together, you know it could be good new, but when the when the glue of those shielding layers starts to get old, the connection isn't perfect anymore between the layers, and um, and again it starts to act like a capacitor. And it kind of collects noise rather than removes it. So, so if you do a shielding, you need to do it right. Do it right. Um, oh my God! There's so much questions. I'm very happy about this. I have a new career. Who's going to make all the guitars? Well, I have a few guys. But anyways, um, oh, Auntie, you're there. Sure, SM57, it is a good microphone. Um, but I'm not sure, I wasn't sure if it's the best one for this purpose. I thought that I would have to have some cool looking, one of those big chunks like uh, 
you know, that YouTubers have, you know, all the fancy YouTubers. Anyway, um, what else, what else, what else? Uh, does guitar neck make more influence on how guitar sound than guitar body itself? Great questions. All along, really great questions. Yes, the well, I, I couldn't say that the you know the the neck or the body uh, that the neck would affect more, but but it affects. And I have good news for you. We're going to talk about this tomorrow on the tomorrow live Q and A that we're going to do about exactly about this stuff about the wood, the pickups, all the you know what affects tone in an electric guitar. So we're going to talk about that tomorrow more. Um, so join tomorrow. And tell your friends to join too, so we get more people. Um, wait a minute, what is there? Reiner, Reiner, hey! Didn't recognize your name first, but then I did. Okay, can I buy a six-string st steam bass from you someday? The five-string J bass grooved like hell all the best, Reiner. Thank you, thank you. Um, this is something that we've had on the table also for a long time. So keep keep bugging me, keep bugging me with the six string bass, all you bass maniacs. Keep sending your emails. It's it's gonna happen one day. It's kind of embarrassing that it has happened already. It hasn't happened already. But you know, we're just a small bunch of people and there's a lot of work. Um Mibu, what do you think about the difference in tone between, say, an 08 set and 011? That's very interesting because, because if you would have asked me this question 10 years ago, I would have said, that, yeah, 11, go 11. But, you know, the more experienced I become, the more I realize that it's not that simple. You know, in one guitar, 09s or 08s, can sound really great. I have my uh, my unicorn classic that I'm. That's my number one guitar, and it's the number one unicorn that I ever made. And that guitar had for for years and years. It had ten fifty two strings. And then, out of just some, you know, yeah, because it, yeah. Now I remember why. Tommy, one of my luthiers. He changed to his unicorn classic, 942 strings. And he's there, you know, on our coffee breaks, he's often strumming that guitar. And I was there listening to that guitar a lot during those coffee breaks. And it sounded great. And then we started talking about that. And we did a little comparison with my guitar and his guitar. And I wanted to try how mine sounds with the with the with the lighter strings. And you know, when the guitar is resonant and Kind of sensitive. It could be that sometimes lighter strings actually somehow bring out something that the thicker strings or the heavier strings didn't. So there is nothing is carved in stone. I think this is what I've learned over the years with with so many things that you know. When there are these kind of quick truths that people tell you that, you know, that, oh, you have 942 strings. No, that's not going to sound great. That's bullshit. If it sounds great to you, it sounds great to you. Don't believe that guy. You know, he's probably read it from, from internet, from some forum or whatnot. And, and this is not, I mean, all, all the, all that matters is basically, you know, how 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 the your guitar makes you feel, and you know, if 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 your guitar feels great, sounds great, it's great. It doesn't matter what strings it has. It doesn't matter what brand the guitar is, and so on and so forth. You know. Okay, um, moving on. Bucket of noises. Thank you. I was looking for a professional answer in internet since forever. Oh. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, Mibu, what are your thoughts about the quality of the cable connecting the volume pots and the output? Again, where, where I know where you're coming from here and we are really 
you know, it's these fine nuances that at the end of the day, everything matters in the same way as when you're building a hi-fi setup and when you ear, your ears kind of tune to all those nuances and you hear all the detail in the music and all that kind of air between the music when when your hi-fi gear is right and you know and then you start kind of start like i said you know you start going deeper into that rabbit hole and at the end of the day great cable inside the guitar like evidence audio or others they they are they are they might make that extra something um okay what is what is here okay k roadster hey gerd from leipzig how are you guys doing in leipzig i hope you've stayed healthy and everything through these bizarre science fiction b b movie science fiction times we're living um did you as well experience that when i when i haven't played a long time the guitar gets warmed up after a few hours the sustain and sensibility increases yes that's right that's what it does and also the, you know the more the, the more you play the guitar the better it starts sounding it starts kind of the guitar really literally this is this is a, something that is carved in stone in my experience that the more you play the guitar the better the guitar learns to vibrate yeah and it's not there's there's another thing about people are always lightweight body or 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 a little bit heavier body it's not always so that the little bit heavier guitar doesn't sound great doesn't it's it depends often it is there is but there's also situations when a lightweight guitar really lightweight guitar doesn't work it's too light and it kind of like wrong frequencies get pronounced so you kind of need to know as a guitar maker as a as a you know but again there's so much guitar so much different kinds of guitars that you know there's no right or wrong here um i think we have to end this very very soon so i'm taking here some of the last questions yeah k roaster mentions about the two string gouges should be linked to the resonance frequency that the guitar has yes that's right too yeah correct but again it's one of these kind of finer finer nuances that that um You know, there's so many moving parts in the guitar. And you know, everything, everything um, matters. Stuart from Sun Bear Pickups. Hey, Stuart. You're playing the Duke? Great. How do I feel about the Duke in comparison to your later models? You big, Stuart, you asked so big questions. I can't answer the question right now. <laughs> we, have to, we have to make another chat about that. But the Duke is my first born original guitar. You know, it has a special place in my heart, always. So nothing can change that ever. Um, K Roaster is asking is the deterioration effect in this as well. Not quite sure what, what you mean by that, so I'm not gonna answer at this point. You can ask me in another chat or whatever we can't no, no yeah. Since you are the big boss, <laughs> Shaggy is faction, big boss now. What does that mean? Do you get to just build normal guitars like a basic mojo? Do you concentrate more on a special one of more one of more? Well, you know, I'm I'm doing everything here. All kinds of things. I run to buy milk from the grocery store for the guys so they can have milk with their coffee. Um, I make guitars, but it's true. I, I, I when I make guitars, it, it is more about uh, 
designing new stuff and and stuff like that. But anyway, this is another chat. This is another chat. We can we can talk about that another time. Um, yeah. Okay, core K roaster. I mean, you mean you bring her to a certain level and then you put back. Do I need to start again and bringing the guitar level? Uh, I'm really not now f somehow following. Maybe it's because I'm tired. I slept very little last night. I'm really sorry if I can't now answer to your question. There's another one from you. I mean, the warm up effect we discussed. Effect example, I play the. Nora Duke for a longer period of time, put her away, then what happens? Okay, now I get it. Deterioration effect. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, there could be something like that, but the way I've kind of figured, at least with my experience, is that what I'm hearing from players is that that you know, when you play a guitar a lot and then you put it away, and then you pick it up after months, or maybe it sits in the case for a year and you pick it up, and, and you really need to kind of work on it again but not as hard as the first time and this is again it's a little bit different process in a way in an acoustic guitar than in an electric guitar the the some of the physics of it and the fundamentals are the same of course with the with the vibration of wood but in a, in an acoustic instrument violin bowed bowed musical instrument or 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 uh, plucked acoustic instrument like guitar mandolin, it's different because there's the top of the guitar that acts like a kind of like an air pump, which the electric guitar doesn't have. So the all these kind of deteriorating and warming up effects in an acoustic guitar are kind of more dramatic in a way. Uh, there comes so much questions, guys. I'm I need to hire someone to help me with the with the chat. Okay, we have two minutes, so I'm really, I'm really sorry. I can't answer all the questions, but yeah. Proud, own, proud owner of the Unicorn Classic number 16 is kind of a copy of your faithful number one. Is it, it is made with nitro lacquer. Is there a reason why you do not use it anymore? Um, yeah, there's a reason why we don't use it. We kind of, I mean, we can use it. We can use it. We don't offer it, but if somebody really wants it, we can. The reason why we are not is because the, the, the kind of quality of these lacquers has changed over the, over the times. And we found that there are kind of sometimes trouble with nitro s trouble that if we offer it as a as an option for people not everybody understands how nitro is with it crack cracking and things so some people feel that there is a problem in the guitar when it starts aging they didn't maybe know it as they when they were buying that guitar when it's not so in a custom made custom ordered instrument we still can make it but we don't kind of talk about it on the website that much because we want to avoid um, confusion in a way. And and the, and the reality is that that for the sound and for kind of how keeping your guitar clean and everything. Personally, I I prefer the polyurethane finishes in that regard. And they when it's made thin and and nice, it it's, it doesn't have any effect to the sound, any negative effect to the sound. So. Anyway, but this is not the topic of today. Nick, Nick Friedrichs, hey, you're here too. Greetings from Cologne. Greetings back to Cologne. What do you think will a top make a difference in the sound of a guitar? Is it or is it is it bare bone without top better? I love your guitars. It depends. There is no right or wrong. People kind of appreciate different things in guitars. And when, again, when a, when a finish is thin, there is a, a minimal effect. I mean, high when when a guitar is finished high gloss, all all over, and the 
in in comparison to paper thin back finish um there's a slight difference in in the weight of the instrument it's some we're talking about grams not kilograms but yeah so so um um but it's it's a minimal difference in 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 weight and uh then we talk about kind of different values how do you how do you want your guitar to to age over the time and which are the priorities that you set for your guitar and there is really no no right or wrong in that regard i have both glossy back guitars and i have paper thin or satin th thin satin back guitars and i i love them all you know i play them different days and yeah anyways uh tuomas it would be so nice to see you a video see a video about weight relating sound video from you okay okay we will make a note about this Okay, is there a reason why do you not use nitro? Okay, that was another one. I already answered to that one. Great. Uh, great, 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 great. Guys, now we are. The one hour is full, and my mentor, Yunu Vorla, told me that don't go beyond one hour because then it gets too long. I am tend to be believe me. He, he's, he's the guy. I mean, if you look at the, read the description text under this video, and I tell you there about what's happening. Yunus being pestering me for I don't know how much to do these live Q and A's. And you know, I think you were right. I kind of like this. This is fun, and I'm really very surprised and happy that there's has been so many of you joining in to this live chat. So, guys, I'm gonna send you a warm bear hug virtual bear hug from finland to wherever in the world you are and and my my wishes and hopes and pray, prayers that that uh, the crisis we're living in is is gonna be you know passed sooner than later right and um great so anyways subscribe to our channel like the video and all the blah 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 youtube stuff that you do okay i really enjoyed this time with you i hope you enjoyed too okay see you next time thanks a million guys ciao kidos